My name is Kelsey Napier. I was born and raised here in Honolulu, Hawaii. I've lived in LA for 10 years, and now I split time between LA and Hawaii. It's great for me because I love to surf, I love to hike, um, I love being outside, and uh, being outside in nature really influences my paintings and my artwork. So before I had visual snow syndrome, um, I worked as a visual effects artist in Los Angeles and I worked on feature films and commercials and my job was very technical um, and also creative, but it demanded a lot of computer time, so normally like 10 to 14 hours a day. So the month leading up to the first time I really got visual snow super clearly, um, I was pretty stressed out. I had a lot of work and was working about like 10 to 16 hours a day, six days a week. Um, I noticed that my eyes were darting uncontrollably throughout the day and I couldn't really stop them. Um, also, I started feeling really depressed and that's a bit uncharacteristic for me. So something felt off but it wasn't like super cute until one day with when i was looking at the computer screen all of a sudden the whole room started spinning like it felt it felt really bad um and then i could feel my heart started beating and everything slowed down into slow motion and uh, the right side of my face went numb and i started having a lot of uh, visual snow at that time so I thought that I might be having a stroke or having some sort of a heart or brain problem. Um, so I went to the ER and all their tests came back negative except for just telling me that I had vertigo, which I already knew. So yeah, after that, that pretty much started our quest of trying to figure out what was wrong with me. So after that big day of getting visual snow really for the first time, uh, those symptoms stuck with me for quite a while. There was about a month where the room was spinning for hours a day. Uh, sometimes it was having really bad migraines that would last anywhere from like three to eight hours. Um, I became very photophobic and I had a lot of palinopsia as well, which is the, like the visual trailing. So it was hard to see or even leave my house. And as I mentioned sort of previously, I love being outside. So it was really weird to have to be inside for that long. Um, I also had like a lot of anxiety, which I hadn't really had like that before, um, as well as like feelings of depression, depersonalization and isolation. And I remember it being even difficult to like go and walk out a hundred feet outside of my house. Like that was a big deal. Um, and at that time I had to rely on my family and my boyfriend basically to do all of my chores for me, which included like laundry, groceries, cleaning. I mean, you name it, but I was basically incapacitated for about five weeks. Um, while we tried to get appointments with a uh, neurology department and see what other resources there were for figuring out what was wrong with me. I saw my neurologist and she had not really seen somebody who was talking about all of these symptoms before. Uh, so she tried to treat it as if it were a migraine. And I tried a bunch of different medications um, that were that could be helpful for anti-seizure or for depression. And I did not react well to any of those meds. Uh, in fact, those were probably the darkest days of the entire visual snow process. Uh, I, they made me like hallucinate and hear voices and all this crazy stuff. I'm really thankful that that's over. Um, but because of that, uh, my parents had had to come out to LA for a while and help me out with things and my boyfriend just while we were seeing uh, the neurologist pretty frequently and trying different things. But basically there was no progress in the first probably eight weeks. And then um, when we had the Visual Snow Initiatives website as a resource, it was 
so helpful because we could give it to my neurologist and she looked at it and she um, watched all the videos and even did research of her own and said, I think this is a really legitimate diagnosis. And that was a really big relief for me because you feel like you're sort of crazy or that you're describing these things and not a lot of people have necessarily heard of them. So, I mean, I, I got uh, an MRI of my brain. We were worried that it might be a tumor or something really scary like that. And thankfully that wasn't the case. So it was a bit of a process, but the Visual Snow Initiatives website was the best resource to give to people. And there's even one video that I found particularly helpful that was an animation that describes uh, what the different s symptoms are. So describes what tinnitus is, palinopsia, um, I mean, what actual visual snow looks like. And this was a great resource because I ended up giving it to my friends and family members. Um, one of the symptoms of my visual snow was extreme expressive aphasia. So that means that I had trouble talking or like even remembering the first part of my sentence. So I would start a sentence and not be able to complete it or have trouble finding words or names. And um, I have general up until that point had a very good short term memory and long term memory. So this was bizarre, but I had expressive aphasia and having that video allowed me to tell people what was wrong with me and communicate a very complex thought in um, an easily digestible manner. So that video is very important. <laughs>